This is video of a mysterious fireball streaking across the skies here in uh, Metro Detroit. It's happened overnight. Look at that. Ooh, wow. Mike Cruz in Trenton caught this rare sight on his ring doorbell camera around 1245 this morning. That is so wild. And we also have reports of people seeing the same thing in Detroit and in Port Huron. And you can tell that is way up in the sky because you can see like cars moving and lights on the ground and that thing is moving so slowly. It has to be way up there. No, at first I thought maybe we put it in slow mo. Right, exactly. But you can see like that light flashing on the right side of your screen. This is real time. Let's check in with seven first alert meteorologist Kevin Jeans. Now, Kevin, is there, or is there a meteor shower? I mean, what's going on in the skies that could be related to that? There is a meteor shower. Uh, oh. the, the Ryan is meteor shower. It's not known for being an exceptional meteor shower, but uh, you know, potentially that one was uh, from the Orionid meteor shower. It peaks tonight, but uh, it's kind of like a full moon. I mean, when meteor showers peak, it doesn't mean we only have one night to see these meteor showers. They usually last for weeks, and so an occasion leading up to that peak, you can see more and more of them. And then after the peak, you also still see uh, some, some meteors. So that's one of the slowest moving fireballs that, I, that I've ever seen on video. Uh, just incredible. That was about 1245 this morning. So uh, we've had clear skies overnight so far. More clouds are starting to uh, roll in and right now it's still most of the clear and it's going to be a bright morning. We're just going to get more clouds moving in by this afternoon, becoming partly cloudy later on today. Right now, some showers across northern Lake Michigan and, and up toward uh, Traverse City, but we're going to be dry not only this morning, but uh, through this afternoon. So temperatures around 50 degrees this morning through 9 a.m. will warm up to about 60 degrees by 11 and then upper 60s by 2 p.m. Highs in the lower 70s again today. Yesterday was 74. Today we're right back to the lower 70s and uh, again, a bright morning. So it's a little bit milder, a little bit more comfortable of a start. Enjoy one more day in the 70s because rain moves in tonight and it's going to start to cool down the rest of the week. Allie. We have one minor crash out there. Westbound I-96, the middle belt ramp closed to get off the highway. But everywhere else really looking good, like here in the Washtenaw County area, eastbound M14 from US-23, following that all the way to I-275, a 12-minute drive. Traffic moving around 73 miles per hour. We're also looking good here northbound I-275, where we even have a little construction in the area from I-94 all the way up to M14, a 10-minute drive. Traffic moving around 73 miles per hour. A look now at our roads. This is South Field Freeway and I-96. I'll let you know if I see any slowdowns that pop up throughout your morning commute. Thank you very much, Allie. 503 is the time now. I knew this morning a shooting investigation is underway in downtown Detroit right now. Police were called to the area of Monroe and St. Antoine in Greektown after reports of shots fired. It is not clear at the moment if anybody was hit. As we learn more information this morning, of course, we're going to bring it straight to you. Happening today, we could be one step closer to approval of two more booster shots. And more people may be eligible to receive this additional dose. Yeah, the FDA could decide later on today about the approval of both Moderna and Johnson & Johnson's booster. Last week, both shots were given the go-ahead from an FDA advisory committee. And this morning, we're learning that the shots can apply to even more Americans. A source close to the process tells CNN that the FDA will soon recommend people as young as 40 years old get a booster shot. Now, this all comes as the FDA prepares to give the OK to mixing vaccine brands for booster shots. A recent study, however, from the National Institutes of Health suggests that we should prioritize mRNA vaccines. The study basically bottom line showed that when you want to get a booster, you don't want to get the J&J &J vaccine as a booster because that did not show good antibody responses. But uh, you want to preferably get any of the mRNA vaccines, which is either Pfizer or, or Moderna. Well, the CDC plans to meet tomorrow to review the FDA's recommendation and offer its own final decision. Well, the Michigan Department of Education is trying to address a teacher shortage by reaching out to people who've already left the profession. Yeah, they're sending out letters to retired educators and they're pleading for them to return to the classroom, if only to make a difference in a child's life. 7 Action News reporter Alex Bozargian joins us live now from East Point Middle School, where administrators are making tough calls due to understaffing. Alex. 
Well, Keenan, just a few weeks ago, administrators had to switch every student in this school to virtual learning because a bunch of teachers resigned without any notice. Now, they have since returned back to school, but the district as a whole is still facing a shortage. More than 20% of their teacher positions are open. Joy Mohammed walked away from her Detroit teaching job in 2017. She says the pay was terrible and there was no room for growth. People go into education because they have passion, not because they have generational wealth. So they need to look into ways to make it accessible to every individual who wants to do it, and they need to make a way for it to be economical. Mohammed is one of the thousands of former Michigan teachers who got this letter in the mail, asking them to come back to the classroom. She says her answer is no. Her current focus is getting a law degree. For the state to be looking for teachers when they are systemically an inequitable system just seemed a little ironic. State Representative Matt Colazar also received the letter. As somebody who spent 12 and a half years in the classroom, it is such a rewarding profession. But unfortunately, outside forces have done a lot in order to make this profession less desirable for young people to go into. According to a data report from the Department of Education, there are currently over 185,600 people with valid teaching certificates, but only 86,300 are currently employed in teaching. Mohammed says it's going to take a lot of legislation and programs for the state to retain and recruit. She says House Bill 4369 is a start. Another uh, Democrat and I have a bill package that would um, uh, create a parapro to teacher pathway and give tuition assistance to paraprofessionals who wish to get their teaching certificates. The Michigan Education Association, the state's largest teachers union, says enrollment in Michigan Colleges of Education has dropped 50% in the last 15 years. They definitely need some teachers, so if you're interested in any open positions, you can find out more at WXYZ.com. Live in East Point, I'm Alex Bozargian, 7 Action News. Yeah, and we 